So even if you've been living under a rock lately, I'm sure that it has been nearly impossible to not notice the sheer level of vitriol when it comes to any and everything related to LGBTQ+. And just to kind of show you how bad it is, many large multinational corporations are choosing to not cash in on rainbow capitalism as they usually do. As anti-fascist turtle points out, as much as I hate rainbow capitalism, it's honestly a scary reminder of the times ahead that companies don't find us profitable enough to do their usual pandering bullshit anymore. And I agree with that, right? I never stated that these corporations were our friends because they don't really care about anything other than profit. But this really is a pretty troubling sign. And this is all happening in part because of fierce opposition by organized fascists like Matt Walsh, who tweeted back in May, the goal is to make pride toxic for brands. If they decide to shove this garbage in our face, they should know that they'll pay a price. It won't be worth whatever they think they'll gain. First Bud Light and now Target. Our campaign is making progress. Let's keep it going. And as loathsome as that individual is, you cannot denied the success of this campaign. I mean, we have been systematically out-organized by fascists in every conceivable way, and the lies that they're spreading about queer people are actually taking hold as frightening as that sounds. For example, LOL Overruled on Twitter shared this screenshot of a blue check user responding to another blue check user burning a pride flag, and they stated as if it were a matter of fact that a majority of trans people are attracted to kids. Now, this idea is being reinforced online with photoshopped images like this, attempting to pedo jacket this random gay man. And also tweets from accounts posing as allies have been gaining a lot of attention, like this one where somebody pretends as if maps are part of the LGBTQ community. And for those of you who are unaware, MAPS is an acronym for pedophiles that stands for minor attracted person. They are not part of the LGBTQ plus community. And this is a lie right here. And I think that most people know that this whole gays or pedophiles smear is just a smear. But I mean, you can't not notice how loud the bigots have gotten. And on the very first day of Pride, Maps was trending on Twitter in an obvious attempt to get unassuming users to think that the LGBTQ plus community is supportive or inclusive of pedophiles, if not just pedophiles themselves. And I think that for the most part, this idea that gay men are pedophiles has been largely disproven by the majority of people. But, but if they can think that trans people are pedophiles or a danger to children, then that's what they're going to try to push as well. But I mean, as I've been alluding to here, the pedo jacketing of LGBTQ plus people, it's not a new phenomenon. But the last time it was probably this persistent was back in the 70s or 80s, just to kind of show you how bad it's gotten. But basically, by telling you all of this, I just want to establish how hypersensitive bigots are this pride in particular. But the story we're going to talk about, the focus of this video, I think it really shows you how bad and quite frankly, fucking dumb things have gotten when it comes to LGBTQ plus discourse, because something completely innocuous is now the subject of rage. But for once, the stupidity isn't originating from America. So this is what British transphobes are outraged about. Now, you're probably confused because I am literally showing you a picture of a fish and you would be right to be confused because why would transphobes be outraged over a fucking fish? Well, my friends, this is not just any old fish. This is an LGBTQ plus fish. You are looking at the Maori wrasse, otherwise known as the humphead wrasse, and it's called that because of the bump on its head. But this fish is apparently trans as hell. And the British Library tweeted a photograph of this fish in celebration of Pride Month, adding, its wondrous forehead isn't the most magnificent thing about this fish. They are protogynous hermaphrodites, which means the females can later change sex to become males. They go on to explain here that Maori wrasse take about five to seven years to become sexually mature, and around their ninth birthday, the females can change sex and become super males. And even even more prominent hump and even brighter color blue and green which makes them super attractive to females ooh la la scientists are still learning about the factors that cause this transition but fish typically change sex to fill a niche in their environment a female wrasse named cena at the national aquarium transformed into super male upon the passing of a male named tang finally they add 
Fish sex is wildly inventive. Clownfish are protandrous hermaphrodites, male to female. Coral gobies change sex repeatedly. Freshwater mangrove killifish reproduce by self-fertilization. All female Amazon mollies mate with males of other species but completely disregard their sperm. So my friends, this fish and its existence is an outrage to conservatives in the UK because it is very, very trans. And that post was basically the British Library's nerdy way of saying, hey, transitioning is a phenomenon that also occurs in nature in the same way that homosexuality has been documented in hundreds of species. I think that the number is over 450 off the top of my head. But conservatives, of course, were not happy about this fact because when feelings are more important than facts to you, you lash out when facts are shared, even if they're pretty entertaining and pretty cool to learn. But they were very mad. As them explains, if there's one thing a certain subsect of British people loves, it's getting big mad about completely innocuous mentions of anything having to do with gender. For example, today, hundreds of transphobes got their knickers in a twist, this is a very British thing to say, over a Twitter thread about a literal species of fish to the point where the British Library deleted the entire thread. Jesus Christ. It's pretty obvious that the library made this a Pride Month thread to celebrate the fact that biological sex is a beautifully varied thing across species and that a static dimorphic sex binary is not actually a default or natural state. In fact, that's not even true for humans, but the library got totally ratioed by transphobes. One person totally missing the point replied, are you saying gay men are actually women because fish? Another person wrote, Pride Month is also a celebration of hermaphroditic fish. And you know what? We'll claim that. These people are absolutely the most unreasonable beings in the existence of our species. Can you imagine just for a second that there was a library that tweeted about how some fish are conservative <laughs> or some fish are transphobic. They go around and they bully the trans fish. Would that fact about fish make you apoplectic? No, because you are a normal person. But these conservatives through a fit and ratioed the library for merely stating a fact about this fucking fish. Just wait until they find out about rainbow trout. Because according to conservatives, the mere presence of rainbows around kids is deeply problematic. Ben Shapiro tweeted out angrily about a bunch of kids marching down a hall in school with rainbow flags. So, I mean, if you follow their logic to its conclusion, rainbow trout, I guess, are also pushing an agenda. Why are these fish trying to make our kids gay? It's just the discourse is toxic, but also very, very stupid. But getting back to the Brits... Uh, congratulations, I guess, for becoming as snowflakey as American bigots. I mean, it was difficult probably to stoop below the very low bar that we set for stupidity here in the States, but you did it, you fucking wank us. So, um, that probably sounded more Australian than British, but you did it. Now, to be fair to the Brits, they're not the first country to be outraged over LGBTQ plus things in nature. Because remember the gay penguins, Roy and Silo? Well, after they tried to hatch a rock, idiots, they were then given a fertilized egg and ended up raising a chick together named Tango. It became an international story. There was even a book written about it, which predictably outraged conservative parents. And it was challenged in schools at the time across the country and became controversial again recently following the GOP's renewed homophobic push, but this book about gay birds also ruffled some feathers in other countries, pun intended, specifically Singapore, whose libraries literally pulled and destroyed copies of the book. See, we're not the only snowflakes. So outrage over animals is not a new thing. And on the subject of gay penguins, since we're talking about them, well, it brings me no pleasure to uh, give you an update to that story. Roy and Silo broke up. So in 2005, the New York Times reported, things began to fall apart in May of 2004 after the two were kicked out of their nest by two aggressive penguins. They drifted apart. That is genuinely heartbreaking. And I hate those aggressive penguins who pushed them out of their nest. I'm going to assume that they were homophobic. That's the only conclusion that you can reach. See, bigots, you're represented in nature too. <laughs> but after they were pushed out of their nest... Uh, probably because they were gay. Maybe they were acting too effeminate. I don't know. I'm, I'm not 
very privy to uh, penguin culture. They were paired up by female partners, by zookeepers, and of course, these gay-ass birds did not like their female partners because they are gay as hell, and I'm guessing that there's not a lot of fish in the sea, another pun, if you're a gay penguin, because that was a pretty rare thing to see. Uh, but I guess the conclusion of this video is that everything is stupid and the discourse surrounding queer issues is toxic and those gay penguins who broke up with each other are cancelled, as are the homophobes who bullied them into breaking up, I guess. And it's just like, I, I want to say one more thing to those gay penguins. We were rooting for you. You, I was going to call them F slurs, but I'm trying to get monetization back on this channel. Although now that I think about it, maybe calling them the F slurs would help me depending on who's reviewing my channel. <laughs> Either way, this is where we're at, folks. 2023 discourse surrounding LGBTQ plus issues. A library posted a photograph of a fish that's trans and bigots ratioed them and got triggered by it. My brain is melting. Cause I wasn't being true